Welcome to General Structures 2 and Lateral Forces Lesson 5, example number 7. And it asks us to rework example number 4 using method 2. And let's see where we're at. We go to example number 4 using method 2. Well, first off, it says example number 4 says if the building examples number 2 and 3 which is 50 foot by 50 foot in plan, one story high, what is the total wind load? resisted by the roof diaphragm. So you have a 50 by 50. This is plan view. And just in case you don't know, plan view is an overhead view. And that's 50 foot by 50 foot. And it's one story. And then it says the building examples 2 and 3. So let's go ahead and go back and see what the exam what the building is in example two and three. So it looks like it's a building like this, which is foot f fifteen foot tall. And it looks like it's I'm pretty darn sure we've been doing a fire station. So that's the overhead door in the fire station. Alright. We said fifteen foot. Alright. And we're doing method number two. So, I believe, I, I don't remember if this one's outside. Let's go to that example number three, and it says, this is an isolated desert region outside of Los Angeles. So, one story. Isolated desert. Outside LA. And we're just going to start from the beginning. How would you do this? This is an elevation view. I don't think I've even come up with that. Elevation view is looking at it from a side. Plan is looking at it from the top. This is terminology you use in engineering and architecture. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. And it looks like we may have done this work already in example number five. Examples in example number five and example number six, we've already done this work. But that's all right, we'll go ahead and do it again. Remember, this can go in any direction. This vertical projection. And then we're going to have a horizontal projection. And I, I, I drew this going down, and that's incorrect. It's going to be an uplift. So we'll draw it like we need to. There's your uplift. Alright, now we go in and we look at our equation. And our equation is our basic wind pressure equation is P, which is your pressure, equals C E C Q C S I. Oh, scratch that. C E C Q. Q S I. All right, and let's once again let's look at C for C E, and that is found in a table. And I always forget which table it is, so I just go back and look. And it is in table 16. Oops, 16 G. What? Is, hold on, give me a second. I move this down a little bit far, too far. There we go. Table 16G, and once again, we're doing the UBC code. So keep that in mind. And we have height above average level of adjoining ground is 0 to 15 feet. We are saying it's exposure C. And remember, exposure C is where you're not in an enclosed region where you have buildings and whatnot, or maybe some other trees, lots of trees. It's more of a flat, exposed region, but then it's not exposure D, where it's you have water, a large body of water. So we're saying that it's exposure C, and then it's 0 to 15 feet, so that gives you a CE of 1.06. Now we go down with CQ, and you get that from table 16-H. It is our pressure coefficient. We are using method 2, projected area method. And we project our area right there on vertical. Okay, so we're going to have two of these. We're going to have our vertical projected area, which over structures 40 foot or less in height is a 1.3. And that's our... It's, depending which way you want to call it, horizontal in any direction, we'll call it horizontal. 
you can call it your vertical projection, or you can call it your horizontal, over horizontal projected area is 0 0.7 upward. And that 0 0.7 upward should give you, you're not going to have an upward force. Well, you could, but you're not going to right there. Upward. All right. So you have two of these, so you're going to get two different uh, P's. P for here and P for here. Oh, when I said here, P for here and then a P for here. So let's go back. Then you get your QS. And our QS is based on our where where we're located. And if you go back to once again, just a lot of turning around. Actually, it gets a lot worse in my opinion. The IBC, um, the newer IBCs, it just gets more more complicated. Wind, I would prefer sometimes if you're just doing a small project that you do have a wind load on that you need to account for. That'd be something maybe using this UBC code would be the easier way to go about it if you just have a, a smaller um, issue to deal with as opposed to going through the IBC. But uh, I'll let that be up to you. Right now, we are in the basic wind speed of 70 miles per hour. And once again, that is in figure 16F. It's the map, the wind map. The minimum basic wind speeds. And we are right outside of LA, but not in the special wind area. It's dashed, so that means we have a basic wind speed of 70 miles per hour. All right, so we take that 70 MPH, and we go to table 16-F. says wind stagnation pressure QS at standard height of 33 feet. That's what we want right now. And basic wind speed MPH, we had basic wind speed of 70. Therefore, you go down equals 12.6 PSF. All right, there you go. 12.6 PSF, we have an importance factor, and we want to go high in the importance factor. I think our importance factor, without looking it up, 1.15. And that's going to be in another table. And usually, I know in the IBC, it's actually in the front. It's not going to be in the same chapter that your wind stuff is in. It's um, Maybe that's the ASE. I'm getting all my codes confused now. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's actually the ASC that I've been talking about. But anyways, the ASC in the ASC 7, which is a, a, a loading book, this is actually up, up front, and let's say if Chapter 6 is your wind, which uh, was in 05, the ASC 7, 05, I believe, was, wind was Chapter 6. This is actually in Chapter 1, I believe. Anyways, we're, we're saying it's usually you're going to have 1.0. This is a fire station. We don't want it to fall over if you have a high wind storm. Therefore, 1.15 since it needs to be helping everybody else. All right, so let's go in and see what we got. All right, so we have CE equals 1.06. And I think we've actually done this before. So I'm right. give me a second, and we'll figure this out. 1.3, 0 0.7. Maybe we can compare. I think we. if it sounds like we've done this for method 1, then let's compare it to method Two and see what the difference is. QS, because I remember specifically doing this again, but it's not going to hurt you to do it twice. This is stuff you need to get used to doing following code. May not be gl glamorous, but it's it's something to do. Anyways, so let's get out my calculator. 1.06 times 1.3 times 12.6 times 1.15 equals 19.967. I'm going to say 20. 0 PSF, and that is going to be, since we use the 1.3 first, that's our horizontal, and then I'm just going to quickly divide it by 1.3, multiply it by 0.7, and we get 10.75, so I'll say 10.8, vert, coal, okay, so let's go up here, I'll change colors to yellow, hopefully you can see it better. This is 20.0 PSF. This is 10.8 PSF. Oh, and actually, looking back, it, the example two is the there's an urban site and then there's a a non-urban site, and the urban site is going to be if you go back to um, table 16G, you'll see that it says uh, exposure of 0.62. 0 0.62. So let's. This is the. If you remember correctly, let's put them in different colors. This is the. What 
is it? I'll underline it in yellow, let's say. And that is going to be the, that was the desert. Okay, desert, and then let's do purple here. This number, all you have to do is divide and then multiply that out. So let's say 20 divided by 1.06 times 0 0.62, 11.7 PSF horizontal. And this is city. And this is exposure B. So all we're doing is changing this coefficient right here to con uh, consider a different exposure condition. So this one's in the city. So this is kind of example number two, and this is example number three. Yeah, this rework this, and then it goes back to the other example that reworks to other examples. It gets kind of confusing, but I think we're there. Okay, so I'm going to do also 10.8 divided by 1.06, because I want to get rid of it, times 6.2, pardon me, and you get 6.3. PSF vertical. So we can also put these up here. So if you're in the city, you're going to have this. If you're in the not in the city, that that's the wrong place. Sorry. All right, let's do this again. 1.7 PSF, and then 6.3 PSF. And now we're going to rework example. We're going to rework a example number four. In example number four, we we were figuring out what. Sorry, once again, very confusing what I'm doing here. We were what is the total wind load resisted by the roof diaphragm? All right, I remember what we did. Okay, so let's look at the total wind. Re, uh, remember, half by the roof diaphragm. So half is going to go down and be resisted by the floor diaphragm, we'll call it, and half is going to be coming up with the wind, uh, the roof. So if you think about it, we're looking at that much. Right there. And remember, it's only on one side with using method two. So we're only looking right there, and we're not going to have the leeward and wind and windward. So let's go ahead and um, solve. So let's call it force horizontal, force vertical, and those are going to be in the desert. Then we'll go back to purple, and we'll call it, sorry, this is all over the place, but force horizontal and force vertical. All right, let's go ahead and start with, since I have a purple pin out, the force horizontal and vertical of the city. So all we have to do is say, okay, where does our distributed area? We're going to have 50 feet this way, and 15 divided by 2 that way. So I'll say 50 foot, 15 foot divided by 2, you just say 7.5 feet. Time, times, we only have this 11.7. We don't have any leeward, and that is going to be... 50 times 15 divided by 2 times 11.7 equals 4,387.5, we'll just say 88, and that's going to be in pounds. And then we dive down here, you're going to have the same 50 foot, 15 foot divided by 2, and this time it's going to be 6.3 PSF. I put that in, and I get equals 2,362.5 pounds. And it looks like we're only doing the horizontal projection, or the vertical projection, the horizontal force, because that's all we need to get the roof diaphragm loading. And if we go up here, let's go change back to yellow. And once again, it didn't ask for the horizontal, or the vertical. The vertical force horizontal projection is all we need to do. So that's 15 foot over 2, and then our, we had 20 PSF, and that equals 50 times 15 divided by 2 times 20 equals 7,500 pounds, and that's your answer.